Punisher, guys. Don't let him stand behind you because he will take you out in any way possible. Gun, knife, fist, another gun, shoot you through a wall. He's going to do all that. And we're going to talk about that trailer on today's Clatter TV Talk. Guys, welcome here to Clatter Video, Clatter TV Talk. I'm Josh Makuga. I'm your host here every single day until I leave for a wedding and a honeymoon and John Roke will be subbing in for me. But as of now, we are live every single day, 11 a.m. PST. We're here on a sensual, sensual Wednesday. Uh, joined, as always, Cody got a good laugh out of that one. <laughs> Uh, here on a Wednesday is our mother of Ginger Dragons, the one and only Grace Hancock. Oh, hello and good morning. Welcome to Sensual Collider TV Talk. Tweet me your sensual questions Ooh, at yeah. Mrs. Grace Face, hashtag Collider TV Talk. And Grace, may I say your hair is looking extra sensual today? Oh, I think, oh, Joshy, <laughs> thank you. Look at oh, that. yeah, I mean, it's not, it's yeah. not bad. Crushing you know, it. these cameras make it look really red. Like, every time I watch this, I'm like, damn, girl, killing it. You know? <laughs> What's up? Yeah. I like it. And here always on a Central Wednesday, it's our it's our mother of anime. Uh, <laughs> hashtag, a, hashtag anime dragons. It's Emma Fett. I like that. I like, I, I like that when you say mother of ginger dragons, I just get in the vision of, of in my head, dragons, but instead of having scales, they're just covered in like ginger Dreckles? glorious hair. Uh, that's oh, yeah. Yeah. bomb yeah. Yeah. on like, every now, level. And now little anime dragons. I like that. Yes. Yeah. <gasps> like little well, cute ones. Mm -hmm. I will Aww, say, Joshy. Spirited Away mm -hmm. it was one of the only anime things I've ever seen. Okay. It was recommended to yeah. me. It's a great and film. It's amazing. It's a really, really well done film. And they have dragons. There is that. a dragon in there that. Is as dragon. a matter of fact. Can't go yeah. wrong with dragons, as anime I always dragon, say. Hashtag five dragons. Yep. Yep. <laughs> What's up? I like it. Okay, we got a fully packed show here today. We're going to do some MMA. Obviously, we're going to talk about Rick and Morty a little bit later. I know you guys enjoy us talking about Rick and Morty, and I enjoy watching that show. So it's a win-win for everybody, Grace. <laughs> but before we get into that, we got a bunch of news to talk about. So, Grace, what's up? Okay, so first of all, and most importantly, in my opinion, which is the only one that counts, Netflix <laughs> has released the first full trailer for The Punisher, showing John Bernthal in all of his badass, yes. anti-hero glory. Yes. I can't. There's like some dope Metallica in this trailer. It's Master so of Puppets. Good. It is so, I, mean, I this is honestly, we were talking about this a little bit earlier, probably my most anticipated show of this fall. I love Vigilante, Revenge, I'm like, hell to the yes. Yeah. He is so talented, I can't wait. Well, in The Punisher, at the time that he was introduced, into Marvel Comics was so unusual because that concept of the anti-hero didn't quite exist in mainstream comics. Yeah. And now we're seeing Punisher get, and, 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 and Punisher's an interesting instance because it's always gotten kind of some mainstream attention because there have been multiple Punisher films mm -hmm. already, but I think that the Netflix world is where this character is really, really going to shine. And I just, I love a good anti-hero. I, I me just, too, right? I love, know. I love complicated heroes. Yes. Because right. the thing is, is yes. A spider he, bit me and my life's tough because high school is yeah, hard. this is right. my problem Fuck with off. a lot of Marvel. Right. I don't care about the I Boy like Scouts. I yes. can't root for a Boy Scout. I'm like, go Truth. have a beer. Shut exactly. up. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, but Punisher is at the core doing stuff for the right reason, yep. but the tactics that he's willing to employ are just Murder. ruthless. <laughs> Murder. You know, so his moral stance is so interesting to me, and, and John Barenthal is just so freaking good he in this part. He's so yeah. good. He has a very I, sexy I mean, voice. I, I, I want loved, his voice to be like my conscience. Yeah, yeah and I, I loved him on Walking Dead. I yeah. really did. Like when Shane was Shane. such a great character, and... I'm just so there's, glad to see him here. There's a hashtag out there called, it's hashtag searching for Shane, because Walking Dead fans have been searching for a Shane mm -hmm. ever since he left, because really and truly, like, yeah, Rick is fine, but Shane was the show. Oh, he was. I mean, Shane was Shane was everything in that show, and really, I mean, listen, I like the governor, and I'm, I'm enjoying Negan, but it's no Shane. It's no, no Shane. But that's not, we're talking Punisher. I gotta say, my favorite part of the trailer, though, is when he when he just says, "Oh, I'm gonna have to kill everybody." He's like, "I'm okay with that." You're like, right? Me too. <laughs> I loved that. <laughs> yeah. Um, because because again, I think that that is sort of the essence of what the character of yeah. the Punisher is all about. It's we have these people we're working together towards a common goal, and maybe there's gonna be some extra casualties because you're yes. working with Punisher. I know. And I love but, having like that friend who's like, "Hell yeah, yeah. I'm on board." Instead just, of like, "No, no, justice," and it was like, <laughs> exactly. "No, I'm in," and I was like. You I guys are that, cool. I really hope that that Karen Page isn't the voice going like, "You don't have to kill everybody," because she's always that daredevil. I know. Daredevil. I hope she's like, not shut either. Up. I because the thing is, I really All liked Deborah Ann Wall. I've always liked her since uh, she was on True Blood, mm -hmm. and I oh, want I did like her in True Blood. I forgot about that. Yeah, and I I just want yeah, I love her Karen to to be on board with this story. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. be on board. Yeah. I want everybody to be on board. Agreed. <laughs> All right, what's next, Grace? Um, and speaking of Shane. <laughs> 
Um, AMC has released the official key art for season eight of The Walking Dead. Ahead of its premiere next month, it features Rick Grimes, played by Andrew Lincoln, and his group of survivors preparing for all-out war. So season eight premieres October 22nd with their 100th episode, which is pretty insane. Um, I personally don't care, but it's insane. A lot of walking. A lot of walking. A lot of dead people walking. I mean, Walking Dead is a series that kind of lost me. It lost a lot of people. Partway through. I mean, you could see a review last year, like each episode, we premiere episode, big numbers. And then as soon, like by the end of the season, we weren't, we were averaging like 20,000 an episode because everybody jumped shit from The Walking Dead. However, listen, if you're going to come back this season, you really want to grab fans, like basically showing, it looks like Washington crossing the Delaware with all the yeah. Union soldiers, right? If you're going to go all out war, you better promise me all out war. I better see all out war. I don't want to have like a Carol episode yeah. in the middle of the like house. And she's like, oh, life is hard. Just start shooting everybody. I'm talking everybody. I want bullets. I want guns. Yeah. I want Punisher well, style because, violence because all the time. Carol has proven herself to be a badass yes. on Walking Dead. And that's, I think at this point, what and we want to see. Susie Homemaker. Because the thing about Walking Dead is... I, I I was one of the people, I didn't mind that it was slow when it was examining the human condition in the world of the walkers and what happens when humans are no longer at the top of the food chain, but you need to get into some action at some point. And based on, and I love, I really do love this banner. It looks fantastic. Yeah. And I, I think the Washington crossing the Delaware allegory is absolutely correct. And so this is what I want to see. I just want to see nonstop action. I want to see Ezekiel kill some people with a tiger. Yeah. And, yeah. and make I have, a war I have movie. questions yeah. make about a war the movie. tiger. What is that a thing? Oh, yeah, you know, no, yeah, yeah. King has Ezekiel a has a tiger. <laughs> that's so, like, Princess Jasmine? Yeah. Like, yeah. that's Except cool. Except this tiger kills people. This, this tiger does kill people. <laughs> it's like yeah. the Punisher tiger. It, it's a Punisher tiger. Yeah. It is. Put a skull on it. <laughs> <laughs> What's next, Grace? All right. Um, also, uh, the CW has released images from season four's first episode of The Flash. Um, so it's going to be returning October 10th with a lot of uh, stressful standoffs and beards. <laughs> that's that's all I wrote to, to say. I will say, listen, I got I got to tell you, I really enjoy hot uh, Caitlin, Caitlin as, Frost. The, as the bartender. Yeah. Listen, there's the thing out there. The guys have, and it's called affection for bartenders. Uh, it just, it happens. <laughs> you go to a bar, and the girl behind the bar is hot. You fall in love immediately. I, I don't care. It, it, you could go to a gay bar, and the guy behind the bar is gay, or whatever you want to say. You f- you fall in love with the person behind the bar. So Caitlin being a bartender, I'm like, you know what? I'm back on board with Caitlin. Well, and of all of the side characters. <laughs> you text your brother like, yeah. Caitlin, Caitlin, am I right? right? <laughs> and I feel like of all of the side characters, Caitlin has is the only one who's actually gotten an interesting storyline yeah. because of the whole Killer Frost thing. And I like, again, that there's this conflict with her of where does she kind of fit into this story. And she seems to be the only one that acknowledges the fact that all the other side characters are just kind of getting shoved by the wayside yes. and not having too much to do. So I'm still interested in her, but I feel like I'm not really interested in anything else. Right, you know, like the, the problem was, uh, what I really liked about the first season of The Flash was not only that he was figuring out his powers, but there was like a clear goal. Yeah. In the last couple seasons, the big bads have been such a letdown and lame. Like I really enjoyed Zoom, but yeah. each, each episode is just like, we can't beat Zoom, we can't beat Zoom. It would have been cool if like they were legit foes and that Zoom was afraid of The Flash. Like for a foe to work, you have to be afraid of your villain and vice versa, mm-hmm. right? You have to be afraid of the hero and you have to be afraid of the villain. And it seems like every time they do a villain on this show, they're, they're not afraid of the no, Flash. No, they're totally evil and they overlord status. And, it yeah, gets tiring, doesn't I, it? It does. It, it's it's very exhausting. Yeah. And yeah, why is there a samurai in yeah, this? Yeah, the samurai picture. <laughs> What's going on? Because nothing says Flash like question. a masked <laughs> samurai. Uh, listen, I think this is, this is like a, this is a huge season for Flash because last season was not well received by a lot of fans. And I got to tell you, I, I liked some episodes, but not like seasons one and two. No. I really like seasons one and two. I agree. And we got 23 episodes to really weather a storm here, so I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. What's next, Grace? Um, all right, so this is a little more. I'm excited about this. Yesterday, Damon Lindelof confirmed on his Instagram, the be all end all for news, uh, that HBO's Watchmen is officially <laughs> starting production. I'm really excited about this because I think this is a really cool partnership with him. He's known for being super creative, super innovative, and 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 um, what's the word? Imaginative is the yeah, word I'm looking for. I like so this that. is like a, with having HBO behind him. I think this is like a really cool partnership. I do too. And he's that using be- that tw- that 12 episode comic that everybody loves that turned into a graphic novel. Right. Mm-hmm. And he, if 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 not anything, Damon Lindelof is thorough. 
Like the when the man he does is. a TV show, he leaves very few strings dangling. And honestly, he does such a nice job of wrapping things up in a satisfying way, as we saw with the leftovers. Yeah. And the thing that's interesting to me is tonally, there are definitely some similarities between Watchmen and the leftovers with this sort of bleak state like of dark, humanity. Dystopian. Yeah, I just yeah. I think that Lindelof is absolutely the person yeah. to give the source material the treatment that it deserves. Because I, yeah. I really like Watchmen. I'm not a huge fan of Zack Snyder's film, and I'm a huge fan of Damon Lindelof's work, particularly on The Leftovers, which he did with HBO. And I, I just really hope that this is a vehicle for Lindelof to get the kind of recognition that he deserves, because I feel that he is woefully underappreciated. I agree. No, 100%. And just like The Leftovers was woefully underappreciated. Yeah. Um, I, I, I Listen, I didn't like the first movie, and I don't think I'm alone in saying that I didn't yeah, love the first I'm movie. Yeah, I'm a huge fan. So to see what they do in, like, reality in, with a little bit smaller of a budget to make it more, gr you know, practical because, effects. Like, more that based kind of stuff. in that reality is versus, the, versus, like, yes, aside yeah. from Dr. Manhattan, that is the comic. It's just people. It's just about humans yeah. that are taking it upon themselves to become Watchmen. heroes, yeah. essentially. Yeah, to become the Watchmen. They're, they're not all powerful. And I, yeah, I just think and grounding it with Lindelof sensibilities and in HBO with a little less money. I mean, that's just the way to do it. Agreed, 100%. All right, Grace, what's next? Um, and next, didn't I didn't mean to say it like that. Like, all right, Grace, Grace. what's next? <laughs> Sorry, that was I'm really like, rude, and I apologize. I just have to as soon read, as I said it, I wrote it. just a little blurb. It's really short. I'm really sorry. Uh, it's really <laughs> short. It's literally HBO has renewed the deuce for season two. I'm done. <laughs> Nailed That's it. it. Woo! Mm. Woo! It's literally season uh, episode, the premiere episode. I hope they was kill off Sunday. James Franco in season one. <laughs> Or at least one of the James Franco. He loves James Franco and everything he's in. Um, uh, I love. Okay, so I watched the second episode of The Deuce. Right, you can th you know what? Throw a spoiler up there, Cody. Yeah. By the second episode, like, like the first episode, alert. he hates his twin brother. Like the straight brother yeah. hates the like the shitty brother who's in gambling debt. By the second episode, they're like, "Remember when we was kids and we was best <laughs> friends? Let's be that again." And they're like, "Yeah, let's be best friends again." And we're like. Now there's no conflict. <laughs> now the show has literally no conflict. All it is is learning what hookers did in the 70s, which David cool loves with me because there's 700 pairs of boobs per episode. And I'm in. So, but here's the thing. And I said to you in pre-pro, the, the HBO was like, it's not vinyl. Better renew it. Yeah. <laughs> Eight people watched. It's better than the six that watched Vinyl. Right. Yeah, it's uh, I, the first. I mean, they, they did that kind of like early preview thing. But yeah, like yeah. technically the first the episode only, the only first aired episode on Sunday. Aired. Yeah. They were like, ah, it's Wednesday season two. <laughs> yeah, like, whoa. Okay. All right. And it's not like when you have a Netflix series that immediately gets reviewed. At least in that case, you've already dropped all the of season. your episodes. You've dropped a season. Yeah. You we have, have seven you, more to go. Exactly. It's like, <laughs> we don't, nobody even knows what. The, I mean, we know what the show is about because we've read about it in in news articles. Let's but, just but, say, let's just say this is back in the day, right? Where TV really didn't have trailers. Right. Okay. Right. This is like when my parents first bought HBO and the only show was the Larry Sanders show, which is an amazing <laughs> television show, an amazing show. But they didn't, it wasn't like, you know, there was Twitter and everybody's like psyched for season three of Larry Sanders show. Right. Right. <laughs> and you just got into to the deuce. Right. And you watched the first episode. Guarantee you my mom and dad have been like, and that was about what? Yep. <laughs> And I know. Episode two is two. What? Because <laughs> if we didn't have the trailers to see what, is, what mean, was coming, trailers, you wouldn't know. What the trailers about. spoon feed it to yes. us. Yeah. Otherwise, it'd be porn. a little bit like the birth of porn. Like you, if you made the trailer, it should have been the deuce, uh, like birth, the birth of porn, right? It, like, yeah. to you. like colon and, the birth of porn. And, yes. Yeah. And the thing is, Love I, those I did enjoy the first episode of the deuce. I do want to watch more of it. And it is very typical David Simon though, with this very slow build to what the show is yeah. actually about. And I feel like you can't accurately judge whether or not people are going to be into the show and tune in for a second season until you've aired. Uh, uh, let's give it at least three episodes. Yeah. 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 Like, Where's the Josh McCougar rule, HBO? Yeah. Don't you know? <laughs> three episodes. 
I mean, yeah, my problem with this is that it wasn't like The Wire where there was so many so solid stories. Like, yeah, there was a lot. I was like, hey, I need some post-it notes. But it was like, there were so many mm-hmm. great, solid characters mm-hmm. and actors that I was like, okay. But like this one, I just, like, James Franco cannot carry a show for me. No. So 100%. I was kind of like, derp, 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 yeah. derp. like, I was like, got getting distracted and doing this and that. So I haven't watched the second episode because I didn't like the first episode. Boom. Sorry. I Listen, I go ahead and renew it. But I still don't know if the show's good. <laughs> and, and I don't they think, don't and by like, if they, if they wrap up season one in like a decent bow, I'd be like, okay, well, that's good. But like, can't, And do, then season two, more porn. More porn. Like, it would be kind of cool yeah. if it went Boogie Nightish, if this was like the part of porn when it was like, it's that's huge and it's in reels and all that stuff. And by the time, like, by, by the way, we now have camcorders and like porn has changed. Like, I, okay. That's what I was thinking. Cause to me, it feels like the deuce as it exists with the idea of it, the sort of legalization of the pornography industry and the kind of sexual revolution in the 1970s. It feels to me like the story they're telling right now is a mini series. Correct. Correct. 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. You nailed it. Yeah. So. All right. Well. I guess we got, <laughs> yeah, there we go. Again, let's let's just <laughs> grumble, go, uh, grumble. HBO like through the fourth episode. They're like, we got to get rid of one of these James Francos because these one of these dudes. <laughs> There's like too go. too many James Francos yeah, right now. Too too many. We went full Franco. <laughs> too many Francos. Emma. We went, we too went full Franco. <laughs> okay. Uh, before we move on to MMA, I would like to uh, I teased it on an Instagram live video. And if you guys are watching right now and you want to, we're before each show we're, we're going to do trying to do either a live Twitter video or a live Instagram video. Maybe we'll alter back and forth, but uh, we're going to be live just taking some questions, hanging out before the show, a little pre pro video for you guys and I talked about it but on Monday because Scott Mance saw Star Trek last night so did a couple other friends I heard him of... screaming from yes. uh, like deep North Hollywood <laughs> nice nice <laughs> uh, Scott Mance saw it We're, we don't get to see it until Sunday uh, with the rest of you and an embargo has been set for the reviews but Scott Mance will be on TV Talk on Monday yeah, to, yeah. for the first like seven to ten minutes or as long as the microphones can handle them um, <laughs> and talking talking Star Trek because I know a lot of you are anticipating the series and uh, and are really excited about it and so are we so we're going to bring on Scott Mance it's going to be a great time it's going to be loud so bring your headphones <laughs> let's do some animation what do you think Grace? Emma Emma Mason that's how the Power Rangers song continues oh yeah <laughs> All right, what's uh, first? Yeah, so first up, uh, it was announced a couple days ago that there is going to be a new Blade Runner anime short from director Shinichiro Watanabe of Samurai Champloo and Cowboy Bebop fame. Uh, they released a little teaser trailer of it showing some of the concept art and some animation tests. The thing that is crazy about this is this was just announced a few days ago, and it's going to be airing on Sony Japan's YouTube channel on September 26th. Wow. So obviously it's been in development for quite a Why while. Why wouldn't they say I have about no it. idea. And when we went to that Blade Runner party at Comic-Con, I yeah. know that I ate a nut taco and like the party was ruined that's for me. That's true, that's but true. But there was nothing about an anime. No, uh, well, and the, and the thing that's really <laughs> interesting is so, and he says it in the little trailer that they Sorry. released, is that Shinichiro Watanabe, and you can see it in his work, says that you know one of the biggest influences on his career as a director was Blade Runner. And Blade Runner was a huge influence on the anime industry for things like Ghost in the Shell. Yeah. It's that that sort of bleak view of the future where you get this kind of mashup of American culture and, and various Asian cultures. Obviously, in Blade Runner, it's more specifically Chinese, but it just fits so well into yeah. that kind of cyberpunk anime world and i i'm very very excited to see this and apparently it is it, the new short is called uh blade runner 2022 blackout it's set during a power outage hence cool. the name blackout uh, so it's it just just me drinking no nah, no uh so it's just a few years after uh the original blade runner which takes place in 2019 so cool. yeah september 26 i like it i'm okay. excited awesome uh also uh yesterday on entertainment weekly uh was the exclusive but then today on youtube as well on netflix's official youtube they released the Season four trailer for Voltron Legendary Defender, which comes back on October 13th. They're now releasing all of the episodes in smaller installments. So we had seven episodes in August, and we're going to get six more episodes on the 13th of October. Cool. The new trailer is basically like a, a rally cry to war. It's, it's them forming the Rebel Alliance. Uh, the the Lions are, are just getting everybody geared up to yeah. take on the Galra Empire. So, uh, and they're yeah, releasing these differently, like because the first season they released all 10 yeah, or 12. So or... Uh, it, yeah, thir- it, they were 
were 13, 13. episode seasons yeah, for yeah. the first two seasons. Okay. And so now basically, I mean, are realistically. Are they going seven and seven? Uh, seven and six. Seven and six. So, so it's yeah, 13. It's but still 13 episodes. Realistically, this is all one season, but kinda, they're just doing it in smaller installments. Do you know what, though? Like, I kind of like that they're doing the smaller ones because it's an easier binge. I totally agree. Yeah, yeah I, I actually really like the, the smaller yeah. Especially because it's only a half hour. It's only a half it's hour great. show, so it's a super, super easy binge. Uh, I am I very tell excited. You, like, for, I'm you know I'm you know I'm not a huge anime fan, and when animation comes, I like the adult stuff like BoJack yeah. or, or whatever. But Voltron is super fun. Voltron's really, really fun. And the and the last season, I loved the first season. I liked the second season too. I didn't like it quite as much as the first. I felt the character stagnated a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But season three came in swinging, and this is really kind of the back half of season cool. three. So I I am very, very excited to see awesome. where the story goes. Awesome. And then finally, whoa, whoa, whoa. Rick and Morty. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, usually on a Rick and Morty episode, we talk about how like they're commenting on like world yes. like, in a very cr creative way. This was a, basically a clip show. It was a clip show, which is incredible. <laughs> yep. And the way they did it is so Rick and Morty in the fact that like these are clips that we've it's never a seen that you've before. Never seen before. <laughs> There's like a highlight reel of, of episodes we've never seen before. Yep. Right. <laughs> And for That's me, funny. it's it, this show. I, I really think you would really enjoy Rick and Morty, Grace, because it's so silly and it's darkly <laughs> weird. Like yep. they kill everybody all the time. Mm -hmm. right? Oh, good. Well, because because Fantastic. Rick and Morty takes such a, a satirical approach to the whole idea of time travel and paradoxes and multiple universes. Interplanetary, yeah. So, I, and I mean, they just go balls to the walls with it. And this, I got to tell you my favorite part of this episode. Which was your favorite episode we'd never seen. episode we've never seen is when Rick becomes like possessed by the worm in his oh, mouth. Oh, yeah. And his parents and his mom and sister are like, come on, you can get it out, Rick. Oh, and I know, Morty. Morty and he's trying to pop up the worm. They're like, they're like, we love you, Morty. Ooh, it's gross. Oh, we and love the, you. The, the worm starts going back and they're like, be nice again. They're like, yeah, Morty, get it out of there. Like, <laughs> their mom and the sister like, don't really care if he survives I, I, I loved, too, the, the thing where the mom was captured and the alien's like, I know that mammals really love their offspring. You can choose one of your children to save. And without <laughs> hesitation, she's like, Summer. Summer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I also loved the part where there was the, the alien overlord that showed up that wanted Rick to kill him because if you get killed by a hero, then you get to ascend to this glorious afterlife. And Morty confronting him being like, oh man, it's really cool that you know you're going to have this afterlife. What, you get proof, right? And he's like, this no. <laughs> and so then he just runs into the street and gets run over by a car and then goes to his version of hell. Yeah. It's like, there is proof and their hell looks terrible. It looks awful. <laughs> it looks terrible. I, I, I mean, yeah. this, this season really, you know what I liked about this season? And I know every season kind of has the same thing, but most seasons one and two had more of like a through line. It was parts. a little more of a narrative. Yeah, this one feels Seinfeldy, and I couldn't. I I I love it. Yeah, it it is just a totally bananas off kilter sitcom. Yes. essentially. Yeah, one hundred percent. Like this is something that I would show my weirder friends and they would love it. You know, and my parents would be like, what are you watching? Stop yeah. watching cartoons. Right it's it's but, <laughs> just such a great show. Yeah. And and guys, there's been so many people tweeting at me asking me to talk about different things. I promise I am not ignoring you. I just like to focus on the stuff that's kind of most relevant for the week that I know other people are watching. And obviously Rick and Morty is a big one. And I wanted to talk about the Blade Runner thing because everybody loves Shinichiro Watanabe. And Voltron, guys, DreamWorks Animation does amazing stuff. Boom. Um, uh, Emma Mason. Way to go, Emma. Thanks. Good stuff. I'm yeah. really enjoying our Rick and Morty conversation. Yeah. Um, you want to do some Twitter questions, Greg? Um, I would, and I would also like to uh, apologize for the snort that you heard off camera <laughs> earlier. That was me laughing, because every time Josh has nut taco, I can't be an adult. <laughs> yep. uh, yeah, we're going to go to... This is honestly one of my favorite Twitter questions from our friend David Wilson. If Collider, Stu <laughs> if Collider Studios cars were spray-painted with dicks, who would be your first suspect? <laughs> <laughs> you would be... <laughs> Who's drawn? Who has the sense of humor of an eight-year-old? Yeah. Who would have a, an accomplice in the dick drawing? Grace Hancock. Uh, you would. Yeah, you, Grace honestly, and I would do like, it in broad daylight while people are watching. We're like, we're putting dicks on your cars. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. I know. That's why I was laughing because when I first read it during, I was like, I was like, would it be me or Josh? Like, I don't. <laughs> oh, it's See, a tough it's funny because I, you think? I think that somebody would try to frame. Josh McCuga specifically, but I could definitely see Grace doing it. So I feel like it would be somebody we maybe didn't expect who maybe has a little like anger brewing. Cobster. Cobster. <laughs> yeah. You know who else could be at, like an unknown co accomplice? Dennis. Yeah, I was oh, going to say like Dennis, Dennis, like silent ninja, yes. like Elijah yes. Wood in Sin City. Like, yeah. And then he would put on Slack, <laughs> who truth? Who truth? Yeah. 
<laughs> and who's in my parking spot? Yep. And who's uh, in my parking uh, spot? Yes. Should we do one more? Yeah, okay. let's do one more. Um, I I like this one also from our friend okay. Derek Spicer. What do you He's guys think questions. Netflix good, is trying to accomplish by keeping the release date for Punisher conspicuously hidden? Oh my God, that drove me crazy at I the end of the trailer. The I literally oh. was like, I was like walking through my iPad and I was just like, I paused it. Yeah. I paused it like six or seven times. All I see is 2017. Well, and guys, let's I face mean, I it. I think it's November. 2017 is almost over, so it's, it's yeah, yeah, it's happening soon. But yeah. what do you guys think? Well, do you think it's gonna... just like building like tension yes. that we're like a hundred percent, a hundred percent annoying? But I understand they, what they're doing. The, the, and I, and I, if they, I hope they don't do something like they're gonna melt the ice like Game of Thrones, and then Ken and I sit in front of a computer <laughs> for three hours and like the ice is still melting. Guys. <laughs> yes. But oh man, that was rough. Here's the thing. October is jam-packed for them already, mm -hmm. so they're not going to waste it in October. No. Right. There's not a ton coming out in November, and then a lot of stuff airs in December because uh, Netflix is smart and knows that idiots like us go on like a two-week kind of hiatus, and we're like, let's get bingy, <laughs> right? So they start releasing all that stuff. So I think November is probably- I agree. Right before Thanksgiving, totally. maybe? Yep, yeah. Thanksgiving weekend. Yeah, yeah, I would not be surprised. Ooh. Black Punisher Friday. Turkey. Ooh. Black Friday Punisher. Emma Fife <laughs> is a freaking genius. <laughs> Man, yeah, snap the shit out of that. Thank you very much. All right, <laughs> let's do a... Uh, <laughs> go the day. If you could pick a TV prison to be locked up, where would it be? Uh, for me, I would choose uh, Beta Tries from the second season of Voltron. Oh, there you go. Yep. I like that. Yep. Yeah. Weird little alien buddies. It'd be a great time. <laughs> I want that on a t-shirt. Weird little alien buddies. It's going to be a good time. <laughs> MO5. Um, I would for sure, I would probably, oh, perfect. Did you read my mind? I would probably say Orange is the New Black because I could hang out with like some cool cats. Yeah. And they like gingers there. Gingers you know the, yeah. Well, cool. they like gingers everywhere. The that's real true. prison that that's based on was like, I don't know, 15 minutes from my house where I oh, grew get up. get out of here, really? Yeah, in Danbury, Connecticut. Shut the front yep. door. <laughs> that's amazing. Yep. I love it. Damn. Yep. Um, that's, I don't know why that makes me that I would excited. I'll tell, tell you the prison I wouldn't want to be locked up in. That's the one from Oz, because uh, everybody yeah, right, gets right, raped right. in that one. Uh, or the night of, where you just turn into like oh, a crackhead Jesus. and have to join a gang. Don't, guys, don't smoke crack. It's not I would, crack. I'd be a terrible crack smoker. I'm yeah. a real lightweight. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would pick, you know what prison I would pick? I'd pick the prison in Prison Break because you can get out of it. Yeah, I mean, pr Break is in the title. Correct. Duh. I love the way your mind works, Joshy. He's a oh. good man. <laughs> All right, that'll do it for us here on a Central Wednesday. Uh, special thanks here to Emma Fife for always being here on a Central Wednesday. Emma, where can the good people find you on the internet? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Emma Fife. My name, E-M-M-A-F-Y-F-F-E. Join me this afternoon on Hyper RPG. I'm going to be continuing to stream Tokyo Dark, which is a really fun Scary game starting at four o'clock p.m. Pacific time. Fun scary game. Those yep. two like words don't go together. The, not for Josh McCougar. They, they don't. They absolutely do. <laughs> Mrs. Graceface. Um, and I'm Grace Hancock. You can find me online everywhere at Mrs. Graceface. I drew the dicks. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag it, uh, guys. I'm Josh McCougar. Josh McCougar on Twitter and Instagram. The Josh McCougar Show on YouTube. Uh, I posted this morning. I, it's an unbelievable opportunity. I get to host a show on Travel Channel. Thank you very much. Uh, starting this Saturday, it's just the pilot episode. So if you like it and you want to tweet it, Facebook it, Instagram it, Snapchat it, whatever, tag at Travel Channel, tell them you love it, tell them you enjoy me on it, whatever. If it goes to series, it'd be an amazing, amazing opportunity for me. And uh, it kind of like holding back tears here because it's really like a dream come true. So uh, I love doing TV talk. Don't take that away. It's just an amazing opportunity for me. I will never leave this desk. I promise you, as long as they give me a show here, I will do it. Uh, I love all you guys for watching, all the support. Everything really does make a guy feel pretty special and humbled. So... As always, put down the book, pick up the remote. <laughs> hey everybody, Josh McCuga here. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Collider TV Talk. Wanna watch more episodes? Click there, it's a, an interactive link. Or for more Collider content, click down there. Subscribe to the channel, tell all your friends. Get an airplane, drive it by that says Collider. I'm not telling you to buy an airplane, just do whatever you want as long as you're watching Collider videos.